Good afternoon, good evening, and a good very early morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on time. I think we have been just releasing the guests from the waiting room, so we need one more minute or so to uh, allow everybody in. And before that, I want to just briefly introduce the background of this uh, webinar and also uh, our honored guest. Uh, uh, first of all, my name is Patrick. I am a, a sales director of China for Acquire Biosciences. Together with me today online, uh, on Acquire side, also our global product manager, Dan Walker, and also our application scientist, Bruce Chan, together with uh, our honored speaker, uh, Dr. Fang uh, So today we are going to talk about, uh, as you can see, neuroscience, right? As we uh, Forecasted before. So nowadays, with the more and more attention on the healthcare and also the life quality, I think from a lot of data suggesting the prevalence of anxiety disorder is very high globally. We saw some data from, uh, for instance, the United States that uh, uh, is suggesting that 31% of adults will experience anxiety disorder, unfortunately, in their in their life. So to, to really improve the life quality, we, the, the, the researching community has been uh, putting a lot of resource and uh, energy into this intriguing and most challenging area. And for long, our technology, as you, some of you have already heard about, our OPPO technology has been regarded as the leading technology in studying immune oncology, microenvironment, right? Well, we do uh, want to share with you that uh, as a cutting edge technology, it is uh, also being used in other areas. For instance, this very important neuroscience research area. So today we have the privilege of uh, inviting Dr. Fan Kirchi from Zhejiang University to share with us uh, their group's study, which has been public, published to published on Cell Magazine in late 2019. So, with that being said, I'm going to invite Dr. Fan Kirchi to deliver the presentation to us. And after that, we'll take some QA together with Dr. Fan. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. I'm glad to have this opportunity sharing our job with neuroscience and immunology. This discovery was about the critical role of CD4 T cells in stress-induced abnormal psychology. In this paper, a multi-color analysis protocol developed by Akuya Bioscience based on OPA multi-color markers was used for staining. <coughs> Nowadays, patients with mental illness are increasing every year. According to an investigation organized by the World Health Organization, one in 13 are suffering from depression or anxiety. The human body has a complex machinism. Mental illness is not only a change in the mental system, but also in the immune system. Research has shown that the immune system not only helps the body stay healthy, but also affects the brain through pathways such as the brain gut axis. However, many questions remain unanswered in the process. Neuroscience is very complex, and we need to detect many biomarkers in situ. Traditional detection methods do not easily solve this problem. Here, we use Acuya OPA staining with factual polaris to detect more biomarkers in brain tissue. The related article was published last year in Cell. This slide shows our main results, from which you can see the changes in the mouse brain after anxiety induction. In the next section, I will show this in more detail. First, to investigate the role of the adoptive immune system, we expose the wild-type mice to electric foot shock or chronic restraint. After induction, 
the mice exhibit a decrease the frequency of CD3 T cells and an increase the frequency of CD4 T cells compared to long-treated controls. This increase in CD4 T cells was also detected in the blood of anxious patients, implying that the patient had the same cause of the disease, same as the mice. We used an open field experiment to quantify anxiety levels. Mice was placed in an open field for five minutes, and their movements were recorded and analyzed. The less they moved in the center, the more anxious they became. After electronic shock, the mice showed a severe anxiety acting mode. But if we depleted the CD4 or CD8 T cells by injecting neutralizing antibodies before inducing the NX model, CD4 T cell depletion could significantly reverse the ES induced anxiety. We also tried to collect the CD4 or CD8 T cells from anxious mice and adoptive transport these cells to wild type mice. We found that only CD4 receptors get anxious and that the induction effect was independent of whether T cells was activated or not. These results suggest that CD4 T cells are essential for stress induced anxiety. We also analyzed the ES induced T cells by RNA seq. 128 specific different expression genes in ES induced CD40 cells was identified. Gene ontology analysis referred that a large number of these genes encoded the microchandral proteins. By confocal and West blot, we confirmed that ES treated the CD4 T cells and the CD4 T cells from anxious patients have severe metal fragmentation. Based on theorem metabolism analysis, metal fragmentation of CD4 T cells may be associated with LTP4. If LTP4 is injected to mice, they also show the anxiety. In fact, if metal channel of fragmentation was not due to stress, but to a knockdown of the other membrane gene mega 2 it would also trigger anxiety in mice. They nearly never go to the center of the open field. And the mitochondrial fragmentation induced the anxiety is associated with the increase of dancing theorem. Significantly high levels of dancing was found in the theorem of both anxious mice and anxious patients. If dancing was injected into mice, it can directly cause the anxious behavior. Next, we wanted to know how dancing affects the brain. In the brains of humans and mice, there is a structure called amygdala. Many studies have confirmed that the amygdala is the emotion center of animals. In the brain of anxious mice, we found a very interesting phenotype. The left amygdala is specifically activated and contains more neurons. This slide shows the HE staining, near staining, and the OPA staining with the Acuia factor plural system. To detect the difference, biomarker expression in situ. After dense injection, left side amygdala activation was also detected in mice brains. To find out which kind of cells was changed, we collected cells from amygdala and did a single cell RNA seq. Results should that the left amygdala of anxious mice contains more oligodentrocytes. Here, we stain the brain tissue with the OPA multiplex kit to test different biomarker expression. 
oligodendrocytos from left amygdala express the more purine receptor ADRA1. Oligodendrocytos could protect neurons and help neurons with the signaling. As confirmed by the BRDO experiment, after stimulation by dancing, the activity of the proliferation of oligodendrocytos leads to neuron activation. So, as predicted, if we inject the AAV virus into left amygdala, specifically silence the expression of ADRA1, the mega 2 KOMS could be released from anxiety. In the last part, by using carbon three glucose tracer experiment, we confirmed that uh, CD40 cells produce intensin for a potassium phosphate pathway after mitochondrial fragmentation. In summary, our data clarify the important role of CD40 cells and dancing in the mode disease. The result could be used for treatment of anxious disorders. By a QR OPA kit, we can detect up to nine biomarkers in neuron science research. Also, we can scan the whole brown tissue imaging with a factor plurius very fast and analyze the imaging effectively by informed software. The total solution is useful for neuron cells research and microenvironmental analysis could accelerate advanced research on neurons. Open multiplex staining can test more markers to illustrate the microenvironmental of brain tissue, especially from brain tumor and neurology disease. This is an image of other labs that have used the OPA staining technique to reflect the immune and the genomic of glioblastoma respond to NTPD1 immune therapy. In our future plan, we want to explain gut brain access with neurology disease. Acquire multiplex staining can help to accelerate the research. For brain and intestinal relationship, we also have to some test some biomarkers try to figure out the reason of neurology disease. This is an unpublished data staining on intestinal tissue with five different biomarkers. In addition, we stained the intestinal tissue with mice uh, with the different purine receptor antibodies and found that the ADRA2B receptor was highly expressed in the dancing injection and the ES group. And the, the receptor was mainly expressed on the mucus. But when the mucus 2 protein was stained in different groups, no major difference were found overall. That means there is no difference in mucus production, but the express of ADRA2B gene is changed. In the future, it will be interesting to clarify whether specific CD40 cell subpopulation regulate emotions and behavior, and many other questions are still remain unanswered. This is a picture of our lab and the names of people who have a contribution to this project. Thank you for your listening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fine, for the uh, introduction. And sorry again, I, we do apologize to the audience. Nothing. Some, uh, yeah. And I also, uh, as I said at the very beginning, that uh, after the presentation, Dr. Fine will be uh, answering questions. So as I have seen from the Q&A session, we have a question regarding how many target molecules can be finally can get finally in one tissue section? Uh, yeah, I think this is more like a technical uh, related question. Bruce, can you share with the group again? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Fan. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you, 
for the nice talk. And about uh, biomarkers, so now we, we, uh, we can taste up to uh, eight biomarkers with, uh, with DEPI. Now we can taste uh, nine colors on the same tissue. And uh, by the OPPO kit, that's a, that's a product uh, based on uh, GSA technology. And uh, we can taste uh, different biomarkers on the same species antibody. So that's very powerful for the uh, microenvironment analysis and uh, detection. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. And also another question from the uh, audience is uh, regarding the software part. As uh, Dr. Fan mentioned, you mentioned uh, inform software during the, your presentation. And I, the question is really about it. Uh, could I use the inform results directly in my paper? So uh, Dr. Fan, would you mind to like, can, uh, please help uh, confirm that, or that, that I saw the image from the, your presentation, right? Is that directly from the inform software or? Uh, it's the, uh, can, you, can you hear? Um, the, yes, the image yes. from the inform software, but uh, later I made some um, light dark uh, adjuster with the future imagine, imagine okay. G of the card. Okay, thank you. So that's mean, that means uh, you combined the inform together with some add on from the image J, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. uh, Patrick seems, uh, seems this, uh, uh, this question is uh, combined with some technique, technique issue about our yeah, please. Uh, software, please. right? So uh, what can I get from Inform? By Inform, we can unmix, unmix uh, multi-spectral multi imaging, and also we can, we can analyze the uh, image to get some data, to get some statistic, uh, information by inform software. That's, that means we, we not just uh, get image, but also we can get the data of the uh, MHC or IHC image. So that's we can qualify the uh, pathology images. That's a powerful tool for our research, for, uh, for basic research of some trans clinic research in the uh, medical or some life science, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fan of Bruce. Uh, we have another uh, question regarding, I think the identification or validation of the results. So the question was, do I need to do some white experiment to, to identify the results found by a vector again? Uh, maybe Bruce, you can start it and then uh, Dr. Fan may add on from her own experience later on. Yeah, Thank you. yes. So um, that's a good question. So the, about the identify, we can, we can use some as a experiment to make cross uh, uh, validation. And also we can uh, just use a vector pluralist to take the image combined with our uh, multiplex uh, staining image. And also we can, uh, to combine with other technologies again. So that's that's a useful technique to combine with NGS or some other uh, technique to combine to resolve the uh, neuroscience or basic research problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question coming in uh, says, I have uh, several questions regarding to the speech. We see the difference between two sides of the brain. What in induced this? Uh, Dr. Vaughan, could you please help to further explain? Uh, yes. We found that the left amygdala is uh, specially activated, but the right is not. The architecture of the brain is uh, still not well understood. And there have been many articles analyzing the difference between the left and the right amygdala of the brain, but no film conclusion have been made. 
based on some studies, we guess that uh, the left amygdala controls the long-term cell memories, and the right amygdala controls short-term cell memories. Our experiment method, because uh, uh, it described in the article, makes the mice produce long-term cell memories. So just the uh, left amygdala was activated. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there's uh, another question regarding the resolution. So it goes with, the resolution is based on single cell level, correct? Maybe Bruce, single. can you? Oh, sorry, Dr. Fan, please go ahead. Oh, no, uh, I just want, you mean single cell level, uh, the number or the um, activation? You, Sorry, that that, it was uh, regarding the resolution of the image. Okay, no, maybe, uh, maybe Patrick could answer it. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Thank you, Patrick and Dr. Ben. The resolution is based on the single cell level, uh, correct? Uh, because our technology, our vector pluralis, now we can up to uh, 40, 40x. Uh, 40x objective lens, so we can detect uh, all the images single by single cell. So there is a high high resolution detection method uh, <coughs> compared with uh, uh, other technologies. So we can see every cells which is expression different by markers. Yes. So resolution that's that's correct. I I, I mean it's single cell level. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Um, and we have a question from a Dr. Pound. Uh, she said that, I'm oh, sorry, I assume it's a she. Uh, there are several issues we, which can induce anxiety. Uh, if all symptom, symptoms are related with the activation of T cells, uh, yes, and that you do have many different triggers. And some people are more easily getting mental disorder under the same stress. That may relate to their immune system. We have found that patients with immune disorders, such as gut inflammation, can exhibit a severe anxiety at the same time. And this type of anxiety cannot be treated with the common medicine that target the central nervous system. Compared with our other data, we believe that about 80% of anxiety is related to the immune system and the activation of T cells. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Fan. And also, uh, there's a following question from the same uh, uh, scientist uh, in, uh, with, uh, with us today. Uh, it's re except for the fragmentation of the mitle, did it do you find any other characteristics which changed in the T cell population? Um, we have already attempted to isolate the immune cells from anxious mice and do some single cell RNA seq. We found that uh, this particular group of T cells highly express a number of genes. This, this kind of genes can be used to clarify these cells. Further attempts will also be made to stain a particular group of T cells with the OPA kit. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we have uh, another one question saying, how large should the tissue be if I use the vector method? Maybe Bruce, could you please? Sure, sure. Uh, about the tissue size. So now we, uh, all the vector system, we uh, support the normal slide, normal slide, normal uh, glass slide. That means uh, it's, uh, uh, it's commonly used in the pathology research. So uh, all the tissue, if the tissue is on this slide, on this slide, so we can detect that uh, just uh, about uh, uh, one uh, one inch me plus three inches of the of the total size. So uh, normally we use uh, a lot of customer use TA, TA tissue microarray samples. So the 
tissue size is very large. So, but in vector system, it can be detected very well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Uh, you know, there's a newly came in question regarding if I, I analyze several molecules, like four, uh, will it be affected each other like the spatial block? I think uh, this uh, scientist is, is concerned about uh, if you are doing multiplex, right? Will the the different molecules be blocking each other in the AC? And maybe Bruce, could you please help to explain further the technical details? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So that's a good question. That's um, uh, some customers where we um, concern about this problem. Uh, so maybe some antibody block the others combined to the antigen. In fact, we have taste up to maybe in our uh, new, new system, in our new codex system that we can detect up to 50 biomarkers in the same tissue. So um, actually this block, we can be, uh, can be ignored in, the, in this kind of detection. The area of the biomarkers in the inside of the tissue is very large. So we, you needn't to care about this problem. Yeah. So if, if you want the answer, the answer is no. No uh, cross or no block, no spatial block uh, between different biomarkers. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce, and also Dr. Fan. I think uh, we are, uh, we have just uh, you know cleared out all the question coming in the Q and session. And uh, yeah. sorry, apologize again for the delay of the starting of the uh, presentation. And, uh, uh, given that the time is approaching, it's like oh, it's already nine forty. I think uh, we will just uh, you know say let's uh, call it a let's call it a, a, a day. And uh, if you have a further question, please feel free to reach out to Akoya. And also, we are we are going to uh, follow up with your needs uh, offline as well. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Fan. Thank you, Bruce, and uh, thank you, Walker. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you all the audience. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye for now.